All right, welcome back to New Zero Land. Whoa, Panero, that was fast. First off, if you didn't stay until the end of my last video, like the average viewer apparently, then you would have only seen this bike, and not this one. Spoiler: my new awesome electric motorcycle is a 2020 Energica Ego. It's red. Some of you guessed it, and I was thinking, dude, I almost had you. <laughs> But so many of you stopped halfway and just thought that I gave up on the electric life. Come on, would I actually buy a Hyosung 250? Did I actually buy a Hyosung 250? What's the deal with the Energica? Why didn't I get the Lightning? Am I going to change the name of my channel now? How many beanies do I own? I'm going to answer all of those and more in this video. No, I'm not changing the name of my YouTube channel. I already ordered patches and I still have my Zero. It's right there. Jeez, you're gonna hurt his feelings. And in the end, they're both electric bikes, so zero could mean zero emissions. I think it still works. All right, back on topic. So why the Ego and why not the Strike? Well, our story begins last October. See, at the time, I still hadn't ridden the Lightning. That happened a few months later. So I was looking for a bike to ride to fill that gap while I waited for the Lightning. I bought my buddy Panero's DSR, and that was awesome, but it only lasted about two months because I found this thing. It was basically the cheapest way to get a DC fast charging bike. And so I sold the DSR to Jez and put all that money toward the Energica. The only problem was I bought this in California and the charging ports are different than in New Zealand. So I had to get those swapped. It's not quite as simple as the Zero where it's just like a computer cable. You just get the one with the, the right prongs for your country and you're good to go. This one in the US is J1772, it's like it's the CCS Type 1, and in Europe and New Zealand and basically the rest of the world is CCS Type 2. So you can buy CCS adapters, they're just like these really, really expensive, really heavy cables, and so I, I was already tired of carrying around cables in my backpack for the Zero, so I figured the easiest way and the most professional looking way to go about it was to just swap the charging ports on the bike. So in the end, this is a European bike that was sent to California and then I got a European charging port installed in California and then the whole thing was sent across the world to New Zealand. And if you didn't know, because I didn't know, this is the plug that Tesla's come with over here. And this whole charging thing is why the bike took so long to get here. And it barely made it with this whole global pandemic thing going on. It was really close to not leaving California. We imported this one and an Evo 107, which belongs to Jeff, that guy who rode the whole length of the country on a zero. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So why didn't I just get a bike from Europe if I had to do the whole charging swap thing back to the European plug? Because of the price, which is also why I got the 13.4 kilowatt hour battery and not the 21.5 in the new ones. With the new Energica models coming out, like the Ego Plus, the SS9 Plus, and the Evo Rebelle, the prices on the older bikes have dropped. Like, you can actually buy a brand new Ego with the smaller battery for a whole lot less than it used to be. And if you want to pay even less, there's a used market for them now. Just a quick search, and the average price is around 15 grand. So the main reason for buying the bike and getting the smaller battery was the price. It was just such a good deal. But I also wanted to use this to show that electric motorcycles are affordable. Because every meet I go to, that's the complaint I hear, that they're just too expensive. What's the retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal. So I've been trying to tell people about the used market for Zero for a while, and now there's a used market for Energicas. It's finally a way for more people to get into electric sport bikes. Obviously, the new Energicas are way better. I mean, they upgraded them for a reason, right? The range on the new batteries is insane, and they're lighter weight. But like I said, this is the most affordable way to have a DC fast charging electric sport bike. And the way I saw this bike is the motor has so much freaking power and the technology and the frame and everything is so well built that in the future, when there's a better battery that's lighter weight, has more capacity, charges faster or whatever, I could just swap it in because everything else on the bike is so solid. I mean, that's exactly what they did with the new bikes. It's the dream of having a future-proof motorcycle that you could just keep upgrading and keep your one bike for the rest of your life. And this could be it. Also, the smaller battery is perfect for my situation in New Zealand where the DC charging infrastructure is just ridiculous. It's everywhere. Quick shout out to ChargeNet for being so awesome. When there's a charging station every 50 or 60 Ks and your bike charges so quickly, it doesn't really matter if you have a lot of range because there's always a place to stop and your stop is like 15 or 20 minutes. 
I'll talk about charging and going on road trips more in a future video, but yeah, it just made sense for me to go with the smaller battery because I don't really need more. Now, what about the Lightning? I'll try and be as diplomatic as I can because I realize how many people watch these videos and I hate that I'm some kind of influencer now. I'm just a dude who likes bikes, right? The Lightning is awesome. The Energic is awesome. My Zero is awesome. Don't worry, I still like you. I'm not here to tell you guys what to buy. I'm not gonna say, don't get that Lightning. Get a Hyosung 250 instead. You know, I'm just having fun with the opportunities that I've been lucky enough to get. I will say, I didn't choose the Energica over the Lightning. I'm just really excited to see what living with an Energica is like. And going on road trips and track days and shooting a whole bunch of sweet videos with it. Someday, I'd really like to own a Lightning too. You know, maybe Jen and I can do an Energica versus Lightning battle video series or something. I don't know. I like all these bikes. Even you, Zero. Don't look at me like that. But at the moment, the Lightning that I want is still being built. I can't say which one's better because I've only had barely any seat time on either one, but so far, the Energica's power, build quality, and customer service has just blown my mind how good it is. I even got this sweet welcome kit. It says, Energica outruns imagination. How cool is that? Got like, Oh, warranty thing, something to adjust the suspension. Got a user manual, which I haven't even looked at yet. Probably should. Got some spare keys. I don't know. It's just like, it's the little things that make it feel so special. So yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, I know my own Zero probably thinks I'm a traitor, but uh, you know, it's, it's something new. And I'm excited to just get out there and have fun on it. Um, which, I don't know why I'm still sitting in my garage. We still have so much time in the video. So... Let's go for a ride. All right, first impression of the Energica Ego. I've only had it about two weeks, but oh my God. <laughs> but it's been awesome so far. Uh, and I've ridden it so much that I actually need to do a service on it. So I'm gonna go ride to the auto parts store and get some automatic transmission fluid oil changes on an electric motorcycle. What's that about? But yeah, first thing, I'm not even gonna beat around the bush, it's heavy. It is the heaviest bike I've ever ridden. Um, it's 286 kilos or 630 pounds. So Jen can't even lift it and I always skip leg day. So it's kind of a struggle. But the good thing is it's got reverse. Bye bye. But just like everybody says, the weight is only noticeable at low speeds. So just don't ride slow. And I know what you're gonna say, and no, weight is not a problem on all electric motorcycles. It's not even all Energicas that feel heavy. You feel it a lot less on the EVA because the seat's lower and the higher bars give you more leverage. And the new ones with the lighter battery mounted lower in the frame, they just feel like normal bikes. Once you get this thing moving, it feels really planted. I used to have a Ducati Street Fighter and it felt the same. Those Italians know what they're doing. I just hated the Ducati's engine. So, electric. Problem solved. Okay, the sounds. Let's talk about the sounds. The Energica has a reduction gear and a chain drive, so it's way louder than the Zero's belt. And everybody looks at you when you ride by. And I love it when you roll off and you get this powering down sound, or powering up, I guess, with regen. Oh yeah, okay, regen. I need to talk about the regen because it's one of my favorite things in the world. And on Energica's, regen is glorious. Most of the time, you don't even have to touch the brakes. When you crank it up to level 4 regen, it's so powerful, it's violent. The motor slows you down so fast, it feels like you're dragging the pavement off the road. Okay, it's a bit too much, but I like that this is possible. They really nailed the throttle. Like, the way it transitions between go and slow is just so smooth. It's like a video game. And everything's controllable and adjustable from tons of menus in the dash and I'll go through all that in another video because there's just so much. I really need to read that manual. When it comes to styling, again, those Italians know what they're doing. Did you ever think that maybe there's more to life than being really, 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 ridiculously good looking? No. I think all Energicas look really good, but the Ego is obviously the best. I'm not biased. It's so aggressive, like an angry owl. So angry and so much carbon fiber. Everybody likes carbon fiber. And my reason for buying a sport bike is 
Pretty much just the looks. I'm still too young and stupid to buy something comfortable. So here we are. And having fairings means better aerodynamics. I feel like I actually get more range at higher speed than I do just putting around town. It's totally opposite from the Zero. But the biggest reason I bought this bike... More power, baby! Yeah! When it comes to acceleration, this is the destroyer of worlds. It doesn't care about your launch control or your quick shifter. It heard your gas bike talking trash and it's waiting for you in the parking lot. This is the ultimate educator. You go to the dealership and you say, I want the fastest bike available. So I guess I'll get a leader bike, right? You guessed wrong. Is this the glorious death I've been searching for? No joke, I'm pretty sure this is the fastest electric motorcycle in the country. Fastest street legal electric motorcycle at least. Eva Hackinson's is a little faster. I'm just skimming through the highlights of the bike. I plan on shooting a lot more videos about it and breaking down each little part. But so far, there's a lot to like. So, what about the Hyosung? Did I really buy this thing? The answer is yes. You guys don't know the lengths I went to troll you all in that video. But now the real reason was, now I have a motorcycle that can do road trips. The Zero can't do road trips, and I'm alright to admit that. Nothing personal, Zero. So we tried to find the most fuel efficient, coolest looking, cheapest bike that we could get so that Jen and I could go on road trips together. And actually, we bought it for the specific reason of riding two up, 640 kilometers in winter to Auckland to pick up the Energica, which I'm definitely making a video about. It's not the last you've seen of the Hyosung, or any of these bikes, hopefully. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.